but looking through this list, we can determine whether they're electrical faults or mechanical faults. Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm Austin Ormond with Diesel Training and today we're going to be talking about fault codes. Now, troubleshooting fault codes can be difficult. So to start off, we got to start by looking at what the fault code actually says. During this video, if you see anything that you like, make sure to give us a like and subscribe and maybe leave a comment if you want to find out anything else. So to start off here, we're looking at these two fault codes. We can see that they're both for the intake manifold one pressure sensor. Now one of them says data valid but below normal operating range. The other one says voltage below normal or shorted to low source. So we have two fault codes for the same sensor that are telling us two very different things here. One is telling us it's most likely going to be a mechanical fault. The other is telling us it's most likely an electrical fault. And we can look at these fault codes and tell that based off of the FMI. So we have FMI1 over here and we have FMI4 over here. Now FMI stands for failure mode identifier. This tells us how that circuit has failed. Our SPN is going to tell us what circuit has failed. So SPN 102 is suspect parameter number 102, which is indicating our intake manifold pressure sensor has a fault. So our FMI tells us how it failed. So we know what has failed and now we know how it has failed. So SPN, suspect parameter number, tells us what has failed. FMI, failure mode identifier, tells us how it has failed. So now let's look at a list of all of our FMIs that are out there. So FMI is gonna be standard. Uh, we'll have that on trucks, equipment, any engine diagnostics, any sort of troubleshooting that we're doing. So this actually tells us how the system has failed. Now looking at this, we see a lot of different FMIs on here, and you may see more. But looking through this list, we can determine whether they're electrical faults or mechanical faults. For example, on this list we just had here, we have intake manifold pressure data valid but below normal operating range. So this may tell us that we actually have low boost pressure. Now in this case over here, we have voltage below. So that tells us the signal coming back from that sensor to the ECM is below the normal operating range, which normally, if it's a five volt reference, we're looking for a range between half a volt to four and a half volts, but that can change, and our reference voltage can change also. So looking at these fault codes, just by looking at the FMI, we can determine whether they're electrical or mechanical faults. So over here, we have voltage below normal, electrical fault. Over here, we have data valid, but below normal operating range. If we look at those FMIs, this tells us that it could be a mechanical fault. And in this case, we have a pressure sensor for our intake manifold, which would be our boost pressure. So that could be a boost leak, a bad turbo, maybe a restricted air filter. In this case over here, that could be anything from a failed sensor, a failed wiring harness, maybe a rubbed wire or an open circuit, or even a short circuit. So we can see a lot of different things there, a lot of different causes for these two fault codes, but they are very different. We can't just look at these fault codes and say, hey, that thing needs an intake manifold pressure sensor. Let's throw one on there and see if it fixes it. This is what we're really trying to prevent from happening. We want to actually diagnose the problem correctly so we know what's going on with it. Let's look at a few more examples. So here we have DPF, differential pressure sensor circuit, voltage above normal or shorted to a high source. So when we look at that, again, we can look at the FMI down here, which is number three. So if we look at our FMI list, we see number three is voltage above normal. That's most likely indicating, again, an electrical fault, a sensor problem, a wiring problem, or it could even be a module problem that's monitoring that sensor. 
If we look over here, we see DPF differential pressure, data valid, but above normal operating range. Now in this case, we have FMI zero. So if we look there, we see high most severe. So that means that our ECM is actually seeing that we have a high differential pressure on that DPF, meaning that we could have a high soot load, the DPF is full of soot, or something else in there. Could be ash, could be coolant, could be oil, whatever. Something is restricting that DPF. So we're actually seeing a mechanical fault over here, while we're seeing an electrical fault here, again, that could be wiring, the sensor, the module itself, could be any of those three things. Let's look at one more example. So here we have our coolant level sensor circuit, voltage below normal or shorted to low source. Now we see FMI4. So again, FMI4, voltage below normal. We can tell that that's an electrical fault, which could be the sensor, the harness, or the module monitoring it. Now if we look at this one over here, we see coolant level data valid but below normal operating range. If we look at our FMI right there, we see FMI1. So let's go back to the FMI list. We see FMI1 is low, most severe level. So this is telling us that our coolant level is actually too low. So in simple terms, this is how we tell the difference between electrical and mechanical faults. So this should help you troubleshoot fault codes in the future just by looking at the FMI code. Even if you don't have a description of it, you can actually tell what's going on, whether it's an electrical or a mechanical fault there. If you like what you see in this video, again, give us a like, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment if this works out for you. Also, let us know what you might want to see in the future for videos coming up.